Greetings, Earthlings. You ever wonder what it's like to worship a pig for a god? Well, now you don't have to wonder, because this deck is about Ilhard the Razebor. For three and two red, we got a 6-6 six, six boar god with trample, and whenever he attacks, you could cheat out a creature from your hand tapped and attacking. At the beginning of the end step, it goes back to your hand, and when Ilhard dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you can just throw it in your library and draw it back out. So let's get into this stuff. So the first and foremost, and really the only ability that truly matters, is the fact that he cheats out creatures when he attacks. So you want things that have really fun enter the battlefield abilities. So things like Bogard and Hellkite, Burning Sun's Avatar, and Crater Hellion are pretty good when you consider that those ETB effects happen during combat so there's a very small window of interaction and if they don't have a board not only are those ETB effects going off but they're also hitting they're also hitting for damage and uh yeah and the fact that they go back to the hand at the end of the turn depending on the board state can kind of leave you open to things but it makes it really hard to actually remove them if they're not sticking around for long you know other cards like dragon mage who you know unless you're against a flying field is really easy to hit in for damage and you know the aforementioned bogart and hellkite makes it so that when you're swinging in for damage you're almost always guaranteed to hit and make it so that you know it's really hard to deal with that a really fun synergy i run in this deck for no for no other reason other than the hilarity of it is world gorger dragon so when World Gorger Dragon enters the battlefield, you exile all other permanents you control. That includes your lands, that includes Ilharg, that includes everybody. But the fun thing about Ilharg is that's a delayed trigger. So he doesn't have to be on the battlefield. So when the dragon drops in, you're getting rid of your entire field. And it's a 7-7 with flying and trample. So it's going to be really hard to deal with. And at the end of the turn, it's going back to your hand. So your entire field's coming back in. You're dropping in all those ETB effects, if you have any, and it makes it really annoying to deal with your field. If you really want to, if you really want to be annoying with it, you can just have Conjurer's Closet out, reflickering the dragon at the end of the turn, and then you kind of leave the field in a position where they can either kill your dragon, find some way to remove it, and get your whole field back, or you just keep hitting them with a 7-7. Seven, seven. There's obviously ways around that, like, you know turning it into a 1-1 with no abilities but at the end of the day it's still really annoying to deal with so there's some you know there's some there's some uh there's a good amount of ramp in this deck you know you want your regular saw rings and your mind stones but i also run glittering stockpile which gets a stash counter whenever you're tapping it for mana and you can sacrifice it to add x mana where x is the number of stash counters on it it's a three cost mana rock but it's still pretty pretty fun now there's a couple gilded gooses, geese, words, of this deck, and it's it's kind of hard to settle on them because there's a lot of great cards in this deck, especially for the type of deck that it is. Some uh, some notable mentions are cards like Fanatic Emojis, who deals damage equal to your devotion to red when it comes in. There's also Goto Bandit Warlord, whom I do run the combo with the Helm of the Host in here. There's also Ogre Battle Driver that gives anything plus two plus zero when it comes in. The haste is a bit redundant, but it's really good for if you're dropping Ilharg out. And then there's Tyrant of Discord, who can get really stupid because no matter what, they're sacrificing something. And if it's a non-land permanent, they have to do it again. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say there's really like a one Gilded Goose to this deck. I guess a good one is Panharmonicon, because in any ETB deck, that's something you want. And because you're dropping your creatures from the hand, that's always going to go off on some level. But I think, you know, some other notable mentions in here are Felden of the Third Path. So if they kill your if they kill your creatures, you can create tokens from them out of the graveyard, re-triggering ETB abilities. There's also Goblin Champion, who, for a one-drop, is actually really dumb. It's a 0-1 with haste and exalted. 
So if he, first turn he comes out, he's already swinging for the fences. You bring out Ilharg and you sw and you're always swinging with him by himself. That's the kicker. You're always swinging with him by himself, so he's gonna get that exalted trigger. <laughs> and the fun thing about Ilharg's trigger as well is it bypasses things that can't attack normally. So for that reason, I run Colossus of Acros. It's a 10-10 Defender Indestructible. Doesn't matter that it's Defender. You're dropping it out, swinging and attacking with Dilharg. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Monstrosity has to be at sorcery speed. So if you're dropping it out as a 10-10, if you could pay that 10, you can make it a 20-20 on attack. That's dumb. Some other really notable cards in this deck that are fun to have out during com <coughs> combat are Angras Marauders and Avatar of Slaughter. Angras Marauders makes things out of hand because if you're hitting a creature with Ilharg, that's doubling the damage onto that creature. And then with the trample damage going over, that double damage is now getting doubled again. So it gets just stupid. <laughs> and same with Avatar of Slaughter. The thing with Avatar of Slaughter is if it stays out on the battlefield, all creatures have double strike and they all attack each turn of fable. But if you're dropping it out with Ilharg, in a sense, that technically makes it so it's mainly your creatures that have it. And with it bouncing back at the end of the turn, now no one has to swing back at you. There's no real crack back on that. So, yeah. The only problem with this deck is it does kind of, it can really struggle against discard type decks. But again, that's why Felt Another Third Path is in here. There isn't really too much proper Grave Recursion in red, unless you're doing with artifacts, which this deck runs about, eh, is, I don't know. It runs about 17 or 18 artifacts, that's including the creatures. So you may might be able to get around it, but it's it's your run-of-the-mill mono red deck, and it's really, it, you know, it, it can get really dumb to play, it can get really fun to play, and the fact that Ilharg, he's not too difficult to get rid of, but he's hard to like keep gone because you can just put him back in your deck and redraw into him. You know, with cards like Thrill of Possibility and Tormenting Voice and even Browbeat sometimes, you're having access to card draw almost constantly. You know, more notable mentions of that are Sandstone Oracle that draws you that draws your hand up to seven when it comes in. So there's not really any shortage of card draw in this deck, so you're almost always going to be able to draw back into Ilharg upon death. You don't have to send him to the command zone. And what's also a really fun thing to do is Helm of the Host. I guess in a sense, Helm of the Host is more of the Gilded Goose in this deck than anything. Because if you slap Helm of the Host on Ilharg, you're now making a copy of him on your combat. It's not legendary, so it stays. If you're swinging with both, that's two triggers. You know, you could run Strionic Resonator in this deck. I don't currently because I don't own the card, but it's definitely an option to copy those triggered abilities. And something really fun is if someone, say, plays an Unsummon on your Ilharg and it bounces back to your hand, you know, and you still have that Helm of the Host copy out, you swing with that Helm of the Host copy out, you could just drop the original Ilharg back out. It'll bounce back at the end of your turn, but again, if you have, say, Conjurer's Closet out there, you just drop it back in and it's permanently out there again. Um, in terms of a power level, I'd say this deck sits at around a 6 or a 7. It's not broken by any means, but it can get <laughs> it can get really annoying if it gets out of hand. Uh, just, you know, just as usual, if you want to see a deck list of this, I'll have it linked to my Mox field in the description. And if you're curious about, you know, spell you know playing spell table games i also have a discord server now that you can join i'll put a link to that as well i'm always down to play games i'm always down to talk magic and just have fun and enjoy like-minded people um yeah with that out of the way i will uh, see you all next time have a great day